This is a massive scandal. And I'm going to tell you why it's a massive scandal. It's not just because of the cover-up. Because in my heart of hearts, I cannot believe the President of the United States, at least one, two, three, four hours in, at the worst, wasn't aware of what was going on. You have to understand the types of communication links that exist from the field into the Oval Office. They're the greatest on the face of the world. One hour, two hours passes. He would have known of the first attacks. Then there were a, a second wave of attacks on the annex itself, the CIA annex. There's no way the President of the United States wasn't aware of this. There's no way the Secretary of Defense wasn't aware of this. There's no way the Secretary of State wasn't aware of this. I'll go further. There's no way the CIA Director Petraeus obviously wasn't aware of this. There's no way the Attorney General of the United States, Eric Holder, wasn't aware of this. You know, we have a command center, too, in the Justice Department. I'm not breaking any secrets. I know, because we built it. It's the first command center in the history of the Department of Justice. There's a command center. There are command centers all over the federal government. And most departments have more than one. The Pentagon, obviously. The CIA, obviously. But there are other intelligence agencies, other defense-related agencies. They have them, too. And, of course, the White House has the most cutting-edge technology that the world can produce. We have drones, more than drones. We have satellites. We have personnel on the ground in Libya. I don't know who they are. I don't know where they are, but they're there, as we do in many other places. We have all kinds of information coming into this government. Don't tell me the President of the United States didn't know for seven damn hours what was going on in Libya when our people were under attack, when our men were calling for help, while they were wiping out our consulate. Don't tell me he didn't know. At some point he knew. And you know what he did? Nothing. He did absolutely nothing. And then when it was over, and then when it was over, he went to Las Vegas. This is a disgrace. I'm telling you what I believed happened. I don't believe in this ideological bubble that my dear friend Bolton's talking about. He is my dear friend. We served in the same administration together. I believe this president did not want to get engaged. He did not want to have a political problem on his hands. And rather than being decisive and making a decision, he did nothing. And so the whole system, the whole hierarchy was bollocksed, was stuffed. Because at the top, the commander-in-chief refused to act. I believe when it's all said and done, that's what we're going to find out. These people didn't have to die this way. They didn't have to die this way. And I'm going to tell you something else. How diabolical this is. That man in Southern California, whatever his name is, is sitting... In a jail today. He's been sitting in jail for a month. Who made a video that was online that nobody watched? Our federal government, all the resources of our federal government, law enforcement, was focused on him to distract you. And he sits in jail today and he didn't do anything. Mark, he violated his probation. You don't know that he violated his probation. Did he go on the Internet? All we know is that he participated in making this film, this video. We don't even know if he was on the Internet. But even so, I'm familiar with probation cases. You don't throw a guy in jail and lock the door for week after week after week. Not for that. And they made a spectacle of him for the whole world to see. 
This is a cover-up, all right. It's a grand cover-up. Because the President of the United States refused to do his duty as the Commander-in-Chief. That's exactly what I believe happened. People are dead, and he's running around campaigning. Move forward, move forward. Move forward. We'll move forward. Get him the hell out of office. We got I don't know how many days left, but the sooner the better. You know, folks, we should be rising up as a people. Enough of this. We should be demanding answers to this. Now, the truth is, the vast majority of us have never served in the military, and the vast majority of our children and grandchildren won't. So when people step up to the plate, former military, current military, foreign affairs officers, and they're in these damn hell holes all over the world, which unfortunately defines three-fourths of the world, when they get slaughtered and abused, we're on the week six here, pulling teeth to figure out what the hell happened. There's one man in this country that can answer this. There's one man in this country who can tell us exactly what he knows, exactly when he knew it, and why he didn't take any action. And his name is Barack Hussein Obama. He can answer it, but he won't. You want to know why? You ready for this? He's not Mr. Tough Guy. He's not a great commander-in-chief. He's a coward. He's ducking the press. He won't answer the questions. Uh, did you ever see any of these emails? Oh, I'm not answering that. Any information come into the White House Situation Room? Oh, we're not answering that. We have an ongoing investigation. Bullcrap with these ongoing investigations. We have a historic election coming up, and the American people have the right to know right now their fellow citizens, ours, were slaughtered by barbarians. Where the hell was the president and what the hell did he do?